This is six time IFBB Bikini Pro Champion, Brina Martinez, and I take ZMA5 to make sure that I get the zinc, magnesium, and vitamin B6 needed to keep my immune system healthy and snack strong. FIHO fans, we are here with Joshua Franco, the fighter from San Antonio, Texas. Franco, how are you doing today, by the way? Doing good, bro. How are you? Good, good. Hey, I'm, I like the background. I like to see all those belts that you have there. I'm glad uh, I get to see that. I was actually going to ask you right before we started this interview, but, you know, we could see the pictures of the, of the belts. So that's good to see. And um, I wanted to, you know, jump right into it. Uh, you know, obviously it's a new year. You know, we're, we're 16 days into 2021. We know that 2020, it was just, uh, let's just say a rare, awful year for not just individually, for everybody, for the sport of boxing. Yeah. What can you take the positive and the negative from last year? Well, the positive side is that, um, you know, I was, you know, still still able to get, you know, some fights in as well as, you know, uh, some of my team as well. So um, not everybody, you know, got to, got to you know, fight, fight in 2020, you know, just because of the, the, the virus that happened, you know, everything that was going on. So, you know, of course it, it was like, you know, a good and a bad year for some people. And it's, it's just, it's crazy, you know, what, what the virus has started, but I mean, you just gotta, you gotta, you gotta stay positive. And, you know, I know that it's going to get better, you know, as, as time goes, time goes by. Yeah. And you know, that that's just, we're all staying optimistic, obviously. Right. And, you know, just simply if once this gets better, obviously you would love to have fans back in the stadium and you can see that here in Texas, we obviously, I'm in Dallas here in San Antonio, we get to see that, you know, little by little, they're allowing more and more fans. And I'm sure that's something you would like to have down the road when, you know, you have another fight, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, it's not, it's not the same without the fans. You know, it's just, it's real quiet in the arenas and, you know, the energy's not the same. So, I mean, you got, you got to do what you got to do at the end of the day. But, I mean, it will be better with fans, of course. You know, that, that's what boxing is. You know, that fan, the fans bring all the hype into the fight as well. Yeah, of course. And, you know, I want to go back a little bit. When you first started your, your, your professional debut, you didn't get a lot of noise, per se, obviously, from your city. But you didn't get a lot of noise. And I remember when you were at the Frisco Stadium, I think it was uh, you were under Robert Garcia's um, stable. You, you were just a young kid coming up. And I asked you, hey, you know, can we take a picture? Can you also take a picture of me or Virgil? And I looked, I was like, you know, I usually don't. I, I, I like taking pictures with fighters that I know in the future will have that spark, that that, you know, that charisma, that people that would attract attention and I wasn't wrong. So what was it? That was like five years ago, per se. If we fast forward, you are now currently the WBA, you know, super flyweight champion. And you fought on June 23rd against Andrew Maloney. You won it. I, you know, I was excited for you as many were, obviously, because uh, I've, I've talked to you before, obviously from the state of Texas. But then we fast forward, to November, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, November 14th, 2020, it, it turned out, but no, you know, a no contest. It was just because of what happened, I personally felt that it was the right call. How did you feel that night? Because you know, you you were not, your emotions were running high, and I could just tell that you were kind of sad about the the, the 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 situation. Can you explain to me what happened throughout that night? Yeah, you know, I mean. Going going into the fight, you know, I had I had a strong training camp. You know, I was I was in the best shape ever, and you know, um, like you said, the doctor called the fight due to uh my 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 eye was you know swelling up. I couldn't see out of it anymore. And in, in the second round, you know, he asked me if I could see. I told him no. He was holding up some numbers. I just told him no. I couldn't see, and you know, it was caused by the headbutt. And then you know, after the headbutt, you know, um, Maloney was just kept trying to work on my eye. You know, which made it worse. So. Um, yeah, the headbutt had caused the caused the swelling, and I couldn't see anymore out, out of the eye. And you know, just the way the fight was stopped, um, I know I was upset, and I know a lot of people watching were upset because they wanted to see a, a good fight between you know me and Maloney. And um, yeah, and you know, I, I was just you know thinking in my head, you know, I went through all that that stuff in training, just you know, just for this this stuff to happen. I mean, but you know, the the ref the ref and the doctor made the call. I mean, that's that's nothing that you know we haven't con control over and. I mean, it, it is what it is. Um, now just, you know, move forward to the next one and we'll see what happens then. Obviously, yeah, of course. And so let's just say, you know, the, the third fight happens. What is something 
few things you can change because Maloney came in with, I'm just going to be honest. He came with a little bit more fire. He, he, he looked like, okay, I want this. I want this back. I'm, I'm not going to let this slide away. I want this back. Now, yeah. what would you do differently? How would you be able to erase all of that? Because if we even go back to the first fight, it was kind of, you know, they were even kind of saying Robert Garcia. I remember saying him, him saying on his Instagram, you know, the judges were kind of going towards more Maloney, even though you outboxed yeah. beautifully, you used every every skill you had tremendously. What would you do this third fight to make sure you erased every doubt, make sure that your training camp that you have will settle everything? What would you do this time? Uh, what I would do is just, you know, um, just, you know, come, come prepare like I always do. You know, I mean, there's there's really nothing that, you know, I would have to, you know, change up in the camp, you know, with training with, for Maloney. Um, I think I'm just the type of fighter that, you know, makes my adjustments when I'm in the ring. And, you know, once I see that a uh, fighter makes, you know, the mistake, then, you know, I'll just keep working off that and, you know, little by little get my timing and my rhythm going. But, you know, um, like you said, he was coming out, you know, really sharp in the, in the, in the second fight. And I felt that, but, you know, um, he didn't really, you know, uh, hit me or, or I didn't feel anything, you know, too dangerous. You know, I just felt like, you know, little by little, I was going to start breaking him down again, you know, um, even, you know, even after the second second round ended, you know, just the way he was breathing, he was breathing so heavily. I just, I knew little by little that, you know, he wasn't gonna be able to keep up with, with the pressure. So little things like that, you're just gonna have to make sure you're gonna erase all the doubts. Would you say if with the third fight happens, would you wanna go more for the knockout to erase all doubts again? Of course, you know, I mean, I, I know I can knock him out. I know I can hurt him. I did it, you know, in the first fight. And, you know, the, uh, the knockout is something I'll, I'll be looking for. But if it doesn't, if it doesn't come, then you know, I'll uh, I'll take the win as you know, as a unanimous decision win. But of course, I'll be looking for the knockout in the third one. How important is it for you to have your father in the corner and Robert Garcia as well in your corner? How important is it to have them in your corner for all this, these fights coming up? It's very important, you know, especially with my father because he knows, you know, who I am, you know. Um, well, you know, uh, I'm, I'm his kid, so you know he knows he knows the best for me. He knows he knows everything about me. So you know, having him in my corner is is good. And you know, also Robert, just because of all the experience he has, you know, with making world champions, you know, he knows he knows you know everything, you know, what it takes to make world champions. So it's 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 good having you know them th those two guys in my corner. Now, you obviously ended the year, although with the controversial, <laughs> you know, what happened with Maloney in the second fight. You still got the award of the Revelation of the Year award by WBA. How did that make you feel? It made me feel, you know, very good, you know, knowing that um, even after the, you know, the second fight happened, you know, I still got, you know, that that um, that notice, you know, of you know coming off, you know, the first fight with Malone, you know, that just goes to show me that, you know, that they didn't forget about, you know, what happened in the first fight, and you know, they saw, you know, what I've been through, you know, in my career, you know, and you know to you know, take the title from the champion that, that night, you know, it, it you know, it, it just shows, you know, that anything's possible, you know, not even, not just for me, but, you know, for every fighter, you know, a loss doesn't mean that, you know, you're done or, or anything, you know, you can still, you know, work hard. And if you're dedicated, you know, you can make a dream come true. I certainly agree with you that a loss doesn't define the type of boxer you are in the ring. I certainly agree with that. You know, a lot, there's a lot of controversial with that because everybody wants to keep that. Oh, but You've seen a lot of great fighters who have had a lot of losses in, in their career and they still have came back. Prime example, we can say even currently right now would be Manny Pacquiao or even back in the day, you know, Oscar de la Hoya, Juan Manuel Marquez, or just a few of them yeah. that we can say that I can name on the top of my head. Now, yeah. having this award, having this award added to your resume, does you feel like this adds more pressure for your up for your throughout your career that like you have to demonstrate, you know, I've I deserve this award and I still need to show that I can, I have it in me. Yeah, of course. I mean, um, the pressure, uh, you know, I don't really, I don't really feel, you know, pressure too much. It's more of like, I want to do it for myself just to show myself and, you know, also my family, you know, and, you know, of course, you know, this upcoming year, I want to, I want to, I want to improve on, you know, each time that I fight, I want to improve and get better and better and better. I don't want to stay at the same level. You know, I just always want to, uh, improve. Uh, yeah, of course. And that's what every boxer, obviously, as an elite level, should always be looking for. Now, you've been in a lot of tough fights. You're, you're quickly grasping attention or getting attention from a lot from the boxing community. 
Now, there's a, there's a fight coming up in, in about a month or so, which is going to be uh, Chocolatito versus um, Juan Francisco Estrada, which is going to be a phenomenal fight. Any boxing fan should tune in. What would be the likely opportunity for you to fight either or of those winners if possibly the Maloney fight doesn't happen again or maybe after you fight Maloney and obviously you come out victorious? How, how likely would that happen? <clears throat> uh, you know, that would, you know, be... You know, in the plans, of course, you know, if, like you said, the Bologna fight doesn't happen, you know, we'll, you know, I'll fight somebody else and then, you know, get the winner, you know, Chocolatito Estrada. Those are the fights, you know, that I've been wanting. I've been wanting the Chocolatito fight, you know, even before I became world champion. So, you know, of course, that, you know, that's that's the fight I have my eye on is Chocolatito. But, you know, uh, I'll, I'll just take the, the winner of those two, of course. Now, Chocolatito, he's soon, I mean, he's going to be a Hall of Famer. He's a tremendous fighter, obviously. Uh, we can't, there's nothing you really can't talk bad about him. His skills are just phenomenal. How would that make you feel if you get to face him and everything goes as planned? You, let's just say you dethrone him. How would that make you feel that you get to possibly retire or finish his career as you beaten? How would that make you feel? That, that would make me feel great. And it'll make me feel, um, you know, I just, I, you know, it had, it had to happen for me to describe, you know, I mean, but. Um, you know, that's something that, I, that, you know, I'm looking forward to. Like I said, I've been wanting, I've been wanting the Charles Vito fight for a long time now. And, you know, not only, you know, to the throne him, I just feel like, you know, me and him will have a, just such a great fight and, you know, the fans will really enjoy it. You know, it'll be worth watching. And I know our styles together, they'll, they'll go perfectly. And, you know, it'll be a all out war and, a, you know, for sure, it'll be a fight to remember and, you know, hopefully go down in, you know, in the, in history. Yeah, of course. Now, obviously, you being in San Antonio right now, uh, are you still training? I know your brother, if I'm not mistaken, I've seen that he's, you know, currently right now in, in uh, Riverside, California. Are you currently right now just staying ready just in case of, you know, any opportunity comes your way? Yeah, of course. You know, I'm always in the gym, you know, a little, little. Sometimes I'll go like three days out of the week, sometimes two. If not, then I'll just run on the treadmill here at, at home and, you know, just stay busy, you know, just so I won't get, you know, too fat, you know, too sluggish, you know, just to keep my body, you know, a little, a little, a little active. But yeah, man, just, I'm, I'm just waiting for that call. Soon as I get that call, I'm, I'll be, you know, in full, in full camp mode. <laughs> yeah. Now talking about a little, you know, Robert Garcia, your brother being over there, your brother, he made huge headlines last year too, with a, with a stupendous knockout when he turned the angle and he uppercut, if I'm not mistaken, uppercut or, or a hook. His opponent. I think, I think it was a, the hook left. A yeah, hook, left yeah, hook. but it was, yeah. it was a marvelous angle what he did. Yeah. And that's just one of the things that people don't realize that boxing is not always just coming forward. You always got to focus yeah. on those angles too, because those angles are just the ones that the, your opponent doesn't expect. So that was yeah. tremendous. How is it, how does it also mm, feel a competition between you and your brother? Because, you know, your brother's coming up. You're obviously, you already have a title. How do y'all's competition? match up when you are in you know in training camp together uh you know of course we're always we're always um pushing each other to the to our limits you know uh, especially when we're in camp together you know we don't want to see each other slack off so you know we'll tell each <laughs> other you know do this do that and you know when we're running uh, my brother's always trying to you know trying to you know really overlap me and sometimes he'll be so like he'll be way ahead of me i'm just like oh like i'm just gonna let him you know come i gotta catch up to him you know uh he always wants to you know um you know, let me see, like, how do I say it? He wants, I guess he wants to show me like, you know, all that, and what he has, you know, and yeah, he wants to do better, which is good. You know, I, I feel like um, I want him to do better than me as well. So, you know, if I see him doing something, you know, kind of wrong, I tell him, hey, like do this a little different, do that. And, you know, even right now, I feel like um, he just, he's, he's different. He's a different breed, especially, you know, um, compared to me, you know, uh, he has those angles, he has, he see he sees stuff different that I don't see. And, I mean, you know, he's just he's just a different breed. I feel like he's he's a better fighter than me, which I mean, I I don't care, you know. <laughs> I I want to see him do good, and you know, I'm, I'm just happy that you know he's making a, he's making you know noise for himself as well, you know, with the knockouts he's getting and everything. Yeah, of course, and I'm sure in the next few years, your brother will still make a big splash in the water yeah. with all his abilities, and obviously, if you you continue your career, now being in Robert Garcia's uh, stable, you have fighters uh, of elite level. Uh, obviously, including yourself, you have Jose Ramirez, Mikey Garcia, uh, Virgil Ortiz Jr. Uh, those are just one of the few that I can mention right now. Now, Virgil Ortiz is about to have a, 
it's in the talks. It's more than likely it's going to happen that he's going to face Maurice Hooker March 27th here in the Dallas area. Obviously, he's from here. How do you see that fight going? I always like to ask fighters, you know, you see Maurice Hooker. You Obviously, he fought Jose Ramirez here in Arlington <laughs> about two years ago. How do you see that fight going if that once it's concrete, which is more than likely? I feel like it's, it's, it's a good fight, you know, for the fans, you know, two, two aggressive fighters that they don't back down, you know, Maurice Hooker, he doesn't back down, you know, he gets hit and, you know, he gets, you know, he wants to fight back right away. So, I mean, it, it, I think it's a good fight for both of them. You know, it's, it, I feel like it's going to be a war <clears throat> and, you know, like I said, Maurice Hooker, he has balls. He doesn't back down once he gets hit, you know, he, he's not, he doesn't shy away. He comes back and that's a great fight. You know, that, that's a fight I'm excited for as well. And I just, but I feel like Virgil's going to, you know, take the win either by knockout or decision. But I um, mean, it, it's going to be something to look forward to for sure. Yeah, of course. And these fights that are coming up get you excited. You're like, oh, come on, let's have this. Yeah. It's happen because right now we're going almost into two weeks with no boxing. And I'm like, oh, we want yeah, some action. For real. <laughs> but, you know, the year is going to be lined up. Hopefully everything, you know, you know, calms down. Talk, you know, move, moving forward from Virgil, you have Mikey Garcia, Jose Ramirez. What is something you can tell me uh, that you, your attributes that you learned from Jose Ramirez and Mikey Garcia being in the same gym with them? Uh, you know, they're both just really smart and, you know, they, they work, you know, very hard uh, when they're in training camp. You know, it, they're, it's awful. Not, not, you know, no distractions, nothing but, you know, work, work, work. And, um, you know, being in the gym with them, you know, um, you learn so much, you know, just from the hard work, watching them spar. You know, just it's a lot of stuff that you, you pick up and, you know, little by little that that when you're watching them. So, I mean, you know, it's great, you know, how to have them in camp. You know, even Virgil, he, he's one of the hardest workers in the gym watching him train, too. You learn you learn things from, you know, all, all of those guys little by little. And, you know, it's great, you know, to have them in the gym. Yeah. And, you know, I, I can back you up on that because here in uh in, in Grand Prairie, Texas or right beside us, obviously the city, the gym, one of the gyms that I go to, sometimes he goes there and trains and I seen him and I'm, and I tell him like, oh, wow. I was like, wow, you, you're going hundred percent. He's like, no, I'm not even in training. Camp. I was like, oh my gosh, are you serious? I'm like, I can only imagine. He's like, no, he's like, you need to see us when we're all together. You know, he brought your names too. And Jose and, and Mikey and the rest, your brother and the other fighters are like, no, it's like three hours and intense, two hours and intense that we just go nonstop and nonstop. I'm like, oh my gosh, but this is, you're yeah. perfecting your craft and there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong yep. with that. Now, yep, yep. I want to ask you, how many, uh, how many, and how many years could you see yourself headlining in the Alamo Dome? No, I would say maybe, in, you know, this year would be great, you know, to defend my title, you know, back home here in the Alamo Dome. But if not this year, then next year for sure, you know, when am I, you know, maybe when I have another title around around my waist or um, something like that. But, you know, I would love for this year, you know, for, you know, the headline here at the Alamo Dome is now, like I said, you know, in, in a year. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Besides Gaito Estrada, besides Chocolatito, is there other names that you, and obviously Maloney, is there other names that you would like to call out that also I need to maybe, you know, meet up in the ring? Yeah, I would say, um, uh, what's his name? Jerome Ancajas. And, you know, that guy from Japan. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how to say his name. Uh, I, do, you know, do you know? Yeah, yeah. I think there was, I was mentioning to you is Ayoke, I, I, I I right? Or that though? guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. He, he <laughs> looked, he looked, <laughs> yeah, he looked really good his last fight. Um, you know, so that will be a great fight to have. Carlos Cuadras looked really good against Gallo Estrada. You know, he dropped him. He was hurting him. You know, any 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 of the fights that, you know, the fans want to see in it, you know, and it's just a good fight, I'll, I'll fight them. Um, you know, I, uh, I don't want any tuna fights or, you know, no easy fights. You know, I just feel like um, I'm, I'm ready for all the fighters right now and to put on great fights right now. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like waiting, you know, for, you know, another year or two years. I feel like, you know, why, why, if, I, if I'm in my prime right now, then let's, let's do it already. Yeah, of course. I certainly agree with you. And, and lastly, we had two fights here. We've had some previous fights in the, about a month ago. We saw Canelo. We saw Ryan Garcia. We obviously, Ryan Garcia, beginning of this year, we had a standout performance. I want to ask you, there's a lot of sayings, but I want to get your personal opinion, you know, that Canelo could probably go down as one of the best Mexican fighters of all time. What do you have to say about that? Just want to grasp your opinion, pick, pick your brain on that. What do you think about that? Because it's hard as me. Now, I'm not that old. I'm a little bit older than you, but I'm 30 years old. And me, who grew up watching Chavez and then seeing Oscar de la Hoya, 
and and even like my family would be like, well, no, Chavez is still it's the best. You cannot change the mindset of 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 kind of hard for me to admit. Yeah, you know what, Canelo will be better or is already the best passing Chavez. What do you get to say about that? <clears throat> uh, passing Chavez, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that he's passing Chavez. You know, uh, what Chavez did, and you know, for the for the boxing world and for his country, you know, that's already, that's already, you know, set, you know, I mean, there's nobody that's going to pass that, you know, he's just a legend, you know, and um, I feel like Anello, he will be one of the greats, but um, about, you know, passing Oscar or Chavez, I don't, I don't think so, you know, but he will be a, a great, you know, one of the greats to go down in boxing and a legend as well. I, I think it would be the argument where it currently goes right now if LeBron's better than Michael Jordan. And I still will say no matter what, even though I'm a LeBron fan, I'll be like, nope. I'm like, yeah. Michael's still going to be the best. And I think that's yep, what's yep. going to settle down with me that I'm going to be like, no, you know what? Chavez is the best no matter what. Although what Canelo does, Chavez paved the path for all for him and for the rest of the fighters that are coming up. Joshua, yep. uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you for, you know, uh, squeezing the time for me. I know we're, we're a little hectic with our schedules. I appreciate your time. And I, of course, I'll be looking out for your next fight and uh you know i want to give a shout out to your fans obviously if you want to see where they can start following you in your social media yeah um, shout out to fight hub shout out to uh my boy right here jr martinez appreciate you for taking the time to interview me bro out of your day i know you have stuff going on at home as well so i appreciate you for that and for all the fans follow me on instagram at professor franco and on twitter joshua franco underscore Th thank you for all the support Joshua, it's been a pleasure. I hope you have a good rest of your day. And once again, thank you for that time.